Hey guys, Mr. Backover here. This is part two of lesson 4.2. Three objectives for this video. We're going to use the domain and period to evaluate sine and cosine functions. We are going to use ideas called even and odd trig functions, and we're gonna use our calculator to evaluate some trig functions. So I guess what we're looking at first here is the domain and the period of these sine and cosine functions. Now, as far as the domain goes, we're going to be able to safely plug in any real number for x or whatever variable that we want to. We're not going to run into any calculator issues or anything like that. The second part, taking a look at what's known as a periodic function, so we say a function f is periodic if there exists a positive real number c such that if we took f of t plus c, well that would just give us the same exact answer as if we were just looking at f of t. Then that c value inside of our parentheses right here is called the period of the function. So what does that mean to us as far as this trig stuff? Well we've been talking about this unit circle and we've talked before about coterminal angles. If we look at the angles pi over 4 and 9 pi over 4, those are coterminal. They both start in the same place, they both end in the same place, but one angle is bigger than the other. Well, when we're looking at evaluating the sine or the cosine of these angles, we're going to end up with the same exact answers because we were looking at these ordered pairs on the unit circle. So if we look at the ordered pair for the angle pi over 4, that would be root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. Well, even if we make that one extra full rotation around, the ordered pair out here ends up being exactly the same. It's still root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. So if we were doing, like, say, the sine of pi over 4, sine would mean we're looking at the y value, so the answer here is root 2 over 2. If we were looking at 9 pi over 4, again, doing the sine, we still want the y value. Well, they're exactly the same. It's still root 2 over 2. So it doesn't matter that this second one had an extra rotation on there. We got the same answer because these functions are periodic. So in general, what we could say about these sine and cosine functions, up top here with the sine of t plus 2 pi n. Remember, this 2 pi n stuff just stands for a number of rotations. Well, we're just going to get the same exact answer as if we were looking at the sine of that t value. Same thing holds true for this cosine. Cosine of t plus any number of 2 pi rotations is just the same thing as cosine of whatever that t value would be. Okay, Again, and that's because they're periodic functions. We're going to use these functions being periodic to help us evaluate some different functions. So the first one we're taking a look at says we want to find the sine of 13 pi over 6. Now if you've got your unit circle handy, you're going to notice that 13 pi over 6 doesn't show up on your unit circle. And the reason is it's too big. The biggest angle that's on there is 2 pi. And if we look at this 13 over 6, that's bigger than 2. So we're going to use this periodic stuff in combination with some of those coterminal angles to help us out. 13 pi over 6 is too big, so what I want to do to make this a more usable angle is I'm actually going to take a rotation away from here. Remember, one rotation is 2 pi, so I'm going to subtract off 2 pi from this angle that we're looking at. Now, in order to subtract these things, we're going to need a common denominator. Right now, we're looking at a denominator of 1, so I think if we multiply top and bottom by 6, that'll help us out. So we'll end up taking 13 pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6, and we end up with just pi over 6. So if we want to evaluate this, we could just look at the sine of pi over 6, since these things would be coterminal angles. If we look at our unit circle at pi over 6, the ordered pair is root 3 over 2 comma 1 half, and the sine means we want the y value, so the answer here is 1 half. If we look at the next one, we've got the cosine of negative 7 pi over 2. Now this angle is too small. Our unit circle doesn't have any negative angles on it. So what I'm going to do is add a rotation to see if that helps us out at all. Now adding 2 pi again, we're going to need a common denominator here. So I'm going to turn this into 4 pi over 2. So if we take negative 7 pi over 2 and add on 4 pi over 2, that's negative 3 pi over 2. But that's still not big enough. It's still a negative angle, which isn't going to show up on our unit circle. So I'm going to add on another rotation, Okay, another 4 pi over 2. 
Now if we add these together, negative 3 plus 4 is 1 pi over 2, and that angle does show up on our unit circle. The ordered pair at pi over 2 is 0, 1, and if we want to look at the cosine of this pi over 2 angle, it's 0, because cosine is the x value. Here's a couple more problems to take a look at. Feel free to try these out on your own, or just follow along with me. So on this one, we're looking at the cosine of 9 pi over 3. Now that angle's too big, so I'm going to start subtracting off rotations. We'll need common denominators again, so I'm looking at a denominator of 3. So this ends up becoming 6 pi over 3. Well, if we take 9 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, we get 3 pi over 3. Well, 3 divided by 3 is just 1, so we end up with pi. So essentially, this is saying the same thing as cosine of pi. If we look at the ordered pair at pi, it's negative 1, 0. So the cosine of pi is going to be negative 1, since it's the x value. For this next one, sine of negative 11 pi over 2, we're going to end up adding a bunch of rotations to this. It's actually going to take three rotations for this to show up on our unit circle. Now, three rotations is the same thing as 6 pi. So if we want to get a common denominator, this 6 pi ends up becoming 12 pi over 2. So if we take negative 11 pi over 2 and add that on there, we end up with just pi over 2. And if we look at the sine of pi over 2, well, the ordered pair there is 0, 1. Y value is 1, so the sine is 1. Now, you might remember back in section 1.5, we talked about even and odd functions. We also have what are called even and odd trig functions. As far as our even functions go, we have the cosine and the secant. For the odd functions, we have the sine, the tangent, cosecant, and the cotangent. Now, remember, what it means to be an even function is if we take f of negative x, a function is even if that answer is the same thing as just regular f of x. So that's what's going on here. If we look at the cosine of negative t, we should get the exact same answer as doing the cosine of regular t. Same thing for the secant. Now, as far as odd functions, if we take f of negative x, we actually end up with the negative or the opposite of whatever answer we would get if we did f of x. So if we look at like the sine of negative t, essentially what we could do is just pull that negative out in front and do the sine of t. Same thing for the tangent. We could pull the negative out in front and just do the tangent of t. Same thing for cosecant, same thing for cotangent. So let's say that we did the sine of some angle t and we got 4 fifths as an answer. Well, if we did the sine of negative t, sine is an odd function. So really what that means is we could just pull that negative out in front. It'd be negative sine of t. And we know what sine of t is. We did that earlier. It was 4 fifths. So this would end up being negative 4 fifths. Similarly with the tangent. Again, this is an odd function. So we could just pull that negative out in front and we'd be looking at the negative tangent of t. Well, it says earlier we did the tangent of t and got 2 thirds. So this should be negative 2 thirds. Now let's say one of these was a cosine. Maybe we did the cosine of t and got 3 fifths as an answer. If we wanted to figure out what the cosine of negative t is, well, the nice thing about cosine is it's an even function. So that means, essentially, we could just ignore this negative in here and just treat it like a regular old t. So we should get the exact same answer as the cosine of t. Last thing we're doing is using our calculator to evaluate some trig functions. Now, some of these trig functions are really, really easy for us to do because like, we've got a sine button, we've got a cosine button, and we've got a tangent button on our calculators. But when we're looking at using these reciprocal functions, like the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent, well, we're going to have to use those sine, cosine, and tangents to help us out a little bit. One thing I want to point out before we do type this in, the 1.5 is in radians. And we know that simply because it doesn't say degrees on it anywhere at all. So I want to double check what mode my calculator is in. Right here, I've got radian highlighted, telling me that my calculator is going to read these angles that I put in in terms of radians. So now if I type this one in, it's 1 divided by the tangent of 1.5 radians. Hit enter, and we get 0 0.0709. 
For our last example, we're looking at the cosecant of 2. But again, our calculator doesn't have a cosecant button. So we're going to have to use this 1 over sine to help us out. So we could rewrite this as 1 over the sine of 2. And again, we're just going to type this into our calculator. So 1 divided by the sine of 2, again, making sure that our calculator is in radian mode. Hit Enter, and we get 1.0997. And we could do some rounding there. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.